Jesus. Okay, so welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden meetup. My name is Roland and I'm your guest for today's session. And as I've mentioned, um, Today, I think we will have a great session. So that is the 10th session in this row. And uh, I think that's a small, um, we have something to celebrate with this. And um, in this session, I will discover a special topic. So this topic is uh, from a user request or from somebody who is watching this series. And uh, he came up with a uh, question how we can use the Node.js SDK with the development uh, network. And when I talk about development network, I mean the Docker dev mode. Uh, this is the network uh, we have developed uh, on the, in the end of January. So we can use a Docker version of that or a binary version. And uh, this request is about the binary version. So today we will see how we can make this, uh, we can use this binary version from SLP and the orderer, and uh, then we can write a Node.js chain code and also how we can use the Node.js SDK to connect to this um, uh, test network. And uh, this is the session today. So, oops. So, okay, a short overview. Um, at the beginning, I will give you an overview about this development environment. So um, we have done this in the past. So I have linked this uh, support material here from the 29th of January this year. And uh, in this support material, you will find uh, two links. One of them is broken, so I will fix, I will fix that uh, as soon as possible. And uh, in this session from 29th of January, we have uh, seen how we can uh, create a binary version development environment. Um, so this means uh, without any Docker uh, system and how we can use a Docker composition to use them. And uh, there you will find a detailed step-by-step -step guide how you can set up this. And um, today we will use this setup and uh, we will try to uh, develop or we will use this predefined chain code from the uh, as a transfer basic example and then we will i will show you how you can uh, connect to this network and that's the reason why i have divided this session into two parts the first part is uh, the preparation of the chain code development environment so i will show you all the steps again the uh, only single missing steps are how you can build uh, the Go binaries for the B and the orderer and how you can clone uh, the favorite repo from the official uh, GitHub rep repository. But this information is also in this uh, support material here. And then we will see how we can use this chain code and uh, what is the advantage of this peer dev mode. And then we will see how we can use the Node.js SDK uh, to interact with uh, this dev network. And yeah, support material is here. Yeah, um, here's the link of that. Here's the link of the support material from the uh, previous session. And then here you will find my two links to the um, Hyperledger Fabric uh, documentation and then to the Fabric chain code node version. It's also uh, always a good tip to read this documentation and to see how uh, things uh, can work. And yeah. And here um, a short overview of this development environment. So this is a try to uh, make this a little bit understandable. So when we use, in this example, we are going to use the binary version. So that means that we will not use any Docker environment here. So we have the possibility uh, that we can build and go binary for the orderer and the go binary for the peer. And uh, we can run this too. 
systems and then we can start the chain code by hand and then we can interact with this chain code. And in this scenario, we will have here a simple network. The fabric repository gives us all the binary, all the crypto material and config which we need. And that's also the key to this task. So when we look into this favorite repository, then we will find a folder called uh, sample config. And in this sample config, we have a folder membership MSP, membership service provider, with all the, mat the crypto materials and certificates we need to get this uh, running. And uh, yeah, so. We will have this, we will use only the binary versions. So, and uh, then we need some tools to control this. So maybe we can use this with, with a terminal multiplexer or we can use it with the jobs command or with the hstop command. So we can, because we would like to run this order on the beer in the background. So we will not uh, see the, in the, photo, in the foreground that the terminal is blocked in this way. And yeah, so then we have a peer and the order are running. And uh, we have to create uh, the Genesis block. We have to create the uh, channel transaction. We have to uh, create the channel, join the channel, install the chain code and uh, um, approve and commit the chain code according to the new lifecycle development in Fabric 2.2. And uh, so, and this means these are the elements from this, uh, from a typical development environment which you can have on your local machine. And then we need the Fabric Node.js SDK. So we have to install it with the npm command. So current version is 2.25, I think. And uh, then uh, we need the, the connection profile. So that's an important part uh, or the tricky part, how we can, make this, uh, how we can make this connection profile or which information uh, we should put in the, into this connection profile. And uh, this is an, an important task, how we can do this. And then we have to create an identity uh, to interact with the network. And um, in the fabric sample configs, we will see that in this membership service provider folder, we will find an admin tab and a key store with a private key. And uh, we need both of them to create an identity and to convert this, to convert this identity to, um, an to the local wallet. So the Node.js SDK uh, works as a client and uh, this client has a wallet, the local wallet, the file wallet in our example. And uh, we have to uh, convert the existing crypto materials here, the, the, the signing certification and the uh, private keys to this uh, local wallet identity. Because we don't have a fabric CA running here, so we cannot um, register and enroll a new identity. So we have to use this one. And uh, for this, we will create a small script. Uh, small script. Um, I call this add to wallet. So you find the script or parts or elements of the script also in some uh, fabric samples, especially in the commercial paper repository or example. And there is a um, similar script um, and this also called at two volunteers. And with this, this is one of our first tasks. We have to create an identity for this local wallet. And then we can use this identity uh, to interact with the network. And these are the steps we have to do here now. Okay, so um, yeah, here I have a step-by-step -step in a guide here as an overview. So the first step is that we have to start the development network um, and we need the chain code for this. And uh, I have copied the asset transfer basic chain code and uh, we can, do a little bit with them and uh, try this to um, to modify or to, to test if the chain code is working or something like that. So we need a chain code. And uh, since this session is all, all about the Node.js, so we use the Node.js version from that. And uh, yeah, that's the first thing. So we need the network and we need the running system. 
with a chain code. And then we need the connection profile. So we have to create this connection profile. The connection profile is nothing more than um, a JSON file or a YAML file, which contains some useful information for, from the network. So in this connection profile, you will set your peer, your um, address, a peer address, or your, your peer address from the peer, a TLS certificate, for example, the order information, or the channel information. And uh, maybe this is also another uh, important uh, piece to get this running. So since this development environment is not so, uh, uh, I'm not sure if this is a real, a real network because uh, we only have a limited network. And uh, that's the reason why I think the discovery service is not working. And uh, that's also the reason why we have to disable the dis discovery service in the connection uh, part from the Node.js application. And we have to write our connection profile by ourselves. And yeah, so that's not really difficult. You only have to know uh, what you have to fill in on the right position. And then we have to convert the identity. So Hyperledger Fabric is a permissioned uh, blockchain system. So every transaction needs an um, identity and uh, we need one identity and uh, we cannot take any identity which not belongs to the system. So that's the reason why uh, in the fair examples you will find an admin certificate and also the private key of this admin. And then we can take this to uh, files and then we can put uh, this uh, into the local wallet and create an identity which the Node.js SDK can read. And this is done with this edge to wallet thread. But this, you can do this also for a regular, for the test network, in the test network example, and you can do it also uh, in your regular uh, network. So that's, there's no different uh, to do this. And then we can create a short command line interface program. So which we can start from the command line with the node befail, with the node command, and then interact with the network. So I call this index chairs, and then we can interact with the network. But on this position, you can also write a node chairs um, application, an express chairs application, or you can use another REST API framework where you can create them um, uh, whatever you want here. So, but these one, two, three, four steps are the steps we are going to do uh, now in this session today. Okay. So, um, I think the first, the important part here is um, when we have to look where we, we find all this information. So, and uh, in this favorite dev folder, uh, we have created in the, in the last session, we have also cloned this Fabric uh, repository. And in this Fabric repository, we will find this sample config folder. So this is important for us because in the sample config folder here, we will find all the needed elements for our test network. We find here the config.tx YAML file uh, for the configuration, we will find here the core YAML file and also the order YAML file. Um, the core YAML file and all these files are important for the connect for the config path, the config path. And uh, when we look into the um, MSP folder, you see here, uh, here this admin search, for example, and so on. And the, and, uh, the key file from that. So, and we can use this information to create a local identity and uh, yeah. So that's important to know uh, that we can find all the elements here in this folder. And uh, also 
important to know is uh, when we look into this config TX YAML file here, then we see the name of this uh, network. So, and important here is the membership service provider uh, ID. So that we, because we have to use this in the connection profile, the name. Okay, so. So the first step is now that we uh, start our network. And uh, I use this uh, terminal multiplexer for that. And uh, we need two environment variables here. We need uh, the, the path. So we have to extend the path uh, with our fabric build path here. So this is the only uh, part which I don't, I, I'm not showing here in this example, how you can build um, the binaries here. So we have here the orderer and the beer and this config TX again file to create the uh, Genesis block and the uh, trans, uh, channel transaction. But how you can do this, you will find this in the, in the documentation. And you can find as well this in the documentation in the official fabric documentation. So, but not in the 2.2 version, you will find this uh, only in the 2.3 version. I don't know why, um, but in the 2.3 version, uh, you will find uh, also uh, official documentation, how you, how you can use the, this dev mode in the binary version here. So, okay. Um, yeah, so we need the, the path and we need the Fabric config path because we have seen here are all, all, all uh, important uh, environment uh, files located, allocated. So, okay, so now, the first step, like in every system, is that we can, we have to create uh, the Genesis block, and uh, we have here the we need a profile for that, and this is the sample dev mode solo uh, profile, and uh, you find this here in the um, you will find this here in the config txyaml file here under the profile section. So sample dev mode solo, huh? here you have the profile for that. Yeah. But you have also here other profiles. So you can experiment also with other uh, profiles here. Yeah, so, but I think for the testing, that's the simplest, this keep, keep the thing simple. And I think that's a simple version or a simple way to do it. So here's a solo order yeah, for that. And uh, I think that's uh, enough. Okay, so um, then we can create this uh, Genesis block. Ah, sorry, I have to look if I have done my housekeeping. So please, that we don't have any troubles here. So empty and the data folder should also be empty. Okay. So no, let's create the Genesis block for that. And with that Genesis block, we can start the order. And to start the order, uh, we can do this in a single line. And we will, uh, we will, we will leave the order running in the background. So uh, please notice this here. So we deliver the standard uh, output and standard error uh, to the uh, to the background, and uh, that will uh, lead that the um, order not uh, is running in the background and is not blocking the terminal here. So, and also when we leave the terminal uh, or leave our session terminal session here, the order is running again, and then the order should run. 
we can check this with a command jobs, for example, and you see here a running order in this. No? Can you increase the phone size? Uh, so which size, the, le the left side, this side or the other side? I think here it's, uh, this is large enough. And um, and here, this you can follow this both, please. Um, so I think then we will have a little bit too less space on the screen. Um, you can follow this uh, in the on the GitHub page, and uh, it's the same document document on this link. I have posted it in the chat, and then you can follow this directly uh, there. So. And okay, so now the order is running. And the same we can do with the beer. So we can start the beer. And the important part here is that we start the beer in this dev chain code. The beer chain code, the dev mode is equals two. So, and uh, this is the important parameter to start the beer in this mode, in this particular mode. And then we can here, we can, uh, this is the command here. And uh, here we set some environment variables for this, uh, for this command. And uh, here we have uh, the beer, the core peer file system path. This is where the blockchain uh, live, but there is the, there's all the data. And here we have a, a debug variable and we have the chain code listen address and uh, the operations address. So, in the documentation from the uh, uh, meetup from end of July, you will find both commands a little bit more explained than here. So when we have jobs, then we see here two running jobs. Yeah? So we have the order running and we have the peer running. Yeah? And you can also use htop for example, to uh, inspect this. And then you can uh, search for that. Yeah. You see here, your piano is running. And also when you do this with the Ottawa, you see also the Ottawa. Um, lift it and quit. So, okay. So the jobs command uh, help you to display uh, the option R is the all running jobs, means all are running jobs. So, okay, and the next, now we have uh, the beer running, we have the order running, now we need um, the channel uh, transaction and we have to create it also with the uh, config.tx uh, file uh, program. And our channel should be uh, channel one and yeah. And we also use here the, the profile for this, the sample single MSP channel profile. And this profile came also from the config.tx YAML file, which I have shown you previously. So, and then the artifacts folder. So now you have here the Genesis block and also this channel transaction. And then you can create the channel with the beer channel create command. And then we can join the channel. So, and then we have to install the chain code. So, and for installing the chain code, we have to follow the new lifecycle, um, chain code lifecycle um, approach or workflow. And uh, that means that we have to package the chain code. Then we have to install the chain code. And um, then we have to improve the chain, approve the chain code. And uh, we have to improve the chain code only for a single organization because we have only this sample organization. And then we can, we can commit this chain code. But the, these are the same steps uh, as you do it in a normal network here. Okay, so, and uh, here I have uh, copied the asset transfer basic. 
as for asset transfer basic example chain code. So we can look into this folder, chain code um, Node.js ATP. So, and this is the chain code here. Uh, later, we will see a little bit more from this chain code so that we can see that this is also, a, also a running and working. So, but here is the chain code. And uh, then we have to package this chain code. And for Node.js, uh, we have to specify uh, the, this uh, option, this lang option with the uh, value in node. So when you do it with the Go lang, then you don't have to use this because the Go is the uh, default language. And uh, yeah, so, and for, for Node and for Java, you have to specify here this option with, and in, in this case, uh, is it Node for Node.js. And we gave them a label, yeah, my chain code. Okay, so then let us package this chain code. And also to, to this process you find in this, uh, in my GitHub, also a session where, where I have um, detailed explanations of how you can install package and uh, config and uh, uh, install, approve, and uh, commit uh, chain code. And what is in this? So here we create a, an ATP tar git uh, uh, zip file. And uh, what is inside of this zip file? Um, yeah, so you can uh, look to this session and then you will find here also information what is inside of this chain code of this package here and uh, why is it important. Okay, so now we have this package here and then we can install it. So yeah, simple peer lifecycle chain code um, install and uh, we have only one uh, peer address. So it's the local running and local host. So this took uh, some, how is it take some, some seconds until this chain code, con chain code is built. Yeah, so now we see um, chain code identifier. So, and we need this identifier for later. So let me check if it's the same. No, it's another one. So we have to copy this. So and I export here an environment variable. Uh, the only reason is uh, we need this environment variable here uh, on the start command of the chain code. And uh, uh, so in this way, I can keep this uh, line uh, a little bit uh, smaller. So that's the only reason why I put this in an environment variable. And we need this here uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the proof. Uh, uh, step as well. Um, okay, so, and then we can start um, the chain code. And to start the chain code, we move uh, or we switch into this, into this chain code folder. So here, and then we can start the chain code. And this is the, the place where when we change our chain code, um, we can stop this chain code and we can start this chain code on this position every time. And then we don't have to do the, the whole approve process and also the install or, as, or an upgrade process when we change the chain code as we have to do it when we use this in a normal system. So when we use it in a, in a, in, in a normal, fabric system, then we can install the chain code, of course, but then when you change the chain, when you 
make some changes to the chain code, then you have to upgrade the chain code. And that's the difference between a normal network and this DEF network. And this position here, we can stop the chain code or simple control C and the chain code is stopped. And then we can start, restart the chain code uh, with this single line. And then we can immediately test what is the, uh, which effect has our modification on the chain code with a new transaction, for example. And yeah, so there is nothing special in. The only special is thing here is that we have here the um, the Ferric chain code start um, command here. And that means that we have to install uh, the Ferric, um, um, I think the Ferric, Ferric common package, the Ferric net and the Ferric network package. And uh, with the Fabric common NPM package, then uh, also a Fabric chain code node uh, program will be installed. And, uh, but also this information is in the last, uh, in, in the session from end of January. Okay, so let me start this now. Okay, and now the chain code is running. And then now we have a blocked window. So now we have to uh, create a new panel here uh, in this terminal multiplexer. So we can do this with a control P and uh, um, comma, not comma, um, uh, quotes. And now we have a splitted uh, panel here. And uh, fabric depth is the same, but we have to set the environment variables again here. And then we need the package identifier here. All right, so, and then we have the two final steps here to uh, finish the installation process. So our sample organization has to approve this chain code. And this is done with the command be a lifecycle chain code approve. And with the package ready here. So, yeah. And uh, that's it. And we have here a valid transaction. And then we can commit it as a final step in this process. So, and then we have this chain code committed. And uh, since this, then from this time on, we don't have to do this uh, approve and install step. We only have, we can only start and stop the chain code in this terminal here. And uh, then we can make changes to the chain code, to the Node.js chain code. And then we start this again. And then here on this position, we can use the CLI or the Node.js SDK to interact with this chain code. And uh, when we test this, so we can use the peer uh, chain, chain code invoke command here. So this is the standard chain code. So let us make a short look into this. Um, so this I will make a little bit larger. So fabric not shares. So oops, is it too large? So and yeah, so the important parts here of the chain code is this is the the index file here. And we have a package tracing file. And then a package tracing file we need here. Um, yeah, but that's not important yet here for the test scenario. So when we install this Node.js chain code in the test network, for example, then we have to, to set here the start command. And here you see also this favorite chain code node command with the start option, but not with this uh, option as we have seen uh, prior um, here. Node start, uh, the beer. No, no, uh, 
now I'm wrong. So no, okay, forget it. This was my mistake. So, and yeah, but this is the important part here that the chain code is also starting. And uh, in this library here, we have this asset transfer uh, JSON file, and this is where the chain code here is uh, organized. And uh, we have here an init um, function, so this init ledger function, and this is the function we are going to call now that we have some test data into the into our blockchain. So and we can do this. So we have the peer chain code command and we have here the invoke command. The invoke command is responsible for sending something to the orderer so make an, um, to make a new asset or to update an asset. And uh, the query command here uh, is only sent to the peer. So, and uh, let us set some environment. And we have here some chain code data and then let us see if this is working. And you see here asset one, blue, five, and so on. Let us check if the invoke also works. And when we query the A1 key, then you see here the owner, uh, the price value. So by another method, get all assets. So this is wrong. Why is this wrong? Um, There's a small error. So So, okay, and you see here the asset. So now this is our starting point of this uh, scenario. So now we have this chain, this net, the network is running, the chain code is running, and we can also query um, the new chain code with the CLI uh, commands. Okay. Okay, so, um, I'm alone here in this session, so because of, because of the chat, so I will try to ask all the questions in the end of the session. So um, yeah, so it cannot mod moderate the session, uh, the chat and and the and the session here at the same time. So uh, I will ask if you have any questions, write the questions into the chat, and then in the end of the session, I will try to answer all your questions. Okay, so this is the part here. So this is our starting position uh, when you see here. So now when you, we are here now, we have a channel, we have a chain code installed and we have used here the CLI. With the CLI commands, we have tested this chain code. So, and this is working. And now we try to uh, make this also, um, make this, fun, this chain code also callable through the Node.js SDK. And for that, so, okay. Um, the first thing is we need a, um, a new, I put this in a new folder. So I call this here client. And um, 
we make an npm project npm init so we can like this and say yes and that's it so we need one favorite one npm package for for this test so we need this fabric network and we save it into the uh, package JSON file here so this is also part of the preparation here So this will take one second. And then we need the wallet folder here. And then we can try to create this connection profile chase. Yeah. And then we will create, uh, we, we will um, create this at the wallet JSON file and then uh, this in an index file, index JS file to start uh, to interact with the network. So, okay, um, that's it. We have this in place. And now we have to create this connection profile. So I have prepared this for you. So let me copy this and then So, okay. So, and as I have mentioned, the connection profile is, you can have it as a JSON file or as a YAML file in the YAML format. And uh, the file itself is nothing more than some information about the network. And uh, when we have uh, the discovery service running, then we, uh, we need less information. But when we don't have this, like in this scenario, we have to name all relevant informations here. And uh, one of the important part is here, the organization. So we have to name the organization. The organization is sample org. So we know this because we have looked earlier into the uh, config TX YAML file. So, and, that, and there the membership uh, organization, the name of the organization is sample art. So, and that's the, also the information where this client belongs to. So then the connection timeout peer and also, so that's a standard value. So you can take it as it is. The second part is we need some information about the channel. This block here, uh, in this block, we have to define the channels. So we have only one channel, this is channel channel one here. And channel one has orderers and the other is uh, placed on a local host. So we can put here a uh, local host here in. And uh, we have peers, we have only one peer and the peer is all, also on the local host. And we have to say some properties for this peer. We can say that this is an endorsing peer, of course. And if not, then we will not uh, make an invoke. Then we will make chain code queries. And also when we uh, event source, so when we want to um, uh, make uh, a chain code uh, where we use uh, events, and then we have also to set this to true. So it's also good for the uh, testing, for the developing. So in this block, we have to define informations about the channel. And the, the channel name is important, then the other position is important, and uh, the local and the, and the peers are important. So, and that's it. So, and then some information about the, organi the organization itself. It's the sample organization. The member MSP ID is sample org. This is also we have seen in the config.txt YAML file and the peers. Uh, we have only one peer, this is the local host, on the local host. And also the orderer. And here is important for the orderer, so, and for the peers here in this, in this block, and in this block here, we have to uh, define the URL for this 
Ottawa and for this uh, peer, local peer. And uh, here uh, we have to set um, the right path. And uh, in this scenario, we don't use a TLS. So uh, we, have, we don't have to use the S here. So, yeah. so GRPC um, is without TLS and GRPC S is with TLS here. Yeah. And we don't have any TLS here in this uh, development environment. And that's it. And this is the connection profile uh, in a minimum configuration, which we need to interact with this test network. Uh, no, the, the board is not fixed. Uh, you can, we have set this in the, in the uh, configuration here. When we start this, you can change this board as in any other uh, configuration of a fabric network. Okay, so, and that is the connection profile. So, but we have to find this information and we can just, we find this information uh, through the config TX YAML file and uh, to the knowledge that we have to name all these things uh, in this config, uh, in this connection profile file, because we don't, we cannot use the discovery service here. Okay, so this is the connection profile. And the next step is here that we have to create the um, add to wallet GS file. And uh, I've created this. So let me copy this and paste that in. So. And in this file, the only thing uh, what this file does is that this file takes the certificate from the user and the private key from this user and put this to this local wallet. And uh, the Node.js client can use this wallet ID to interact with the network. And this is one way to, 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 to get an identity to this local wallet. And uh, yeah, this is standard node. We need this to standard Node.js models. We need the file system and the path. And then we need the, the wallets um, object here from the fabric uh, network uh, module, which we have installed. And then we have here to uh, define we have to uh, write the right path on our current location here, since we have this in, we have a client folder and in the parent folder, we have this fabric folder here. And then here's the path to the fabric and the sample config. And then you have here this admin cells uh, folder and the admin cells uh, PEM file, which is the uh, signing certificate and the key file for this user is in the key store file. It's the private key file. And we gave them a, um, a name. So the, the identity label name could be any name. So and, uh, we call this admin. And then we can create here a wallet object from this. Uh, this is a new file system wallet. So we can have different wallet types and the file system wallet is um, one of them we can have uh, in memory wallet system, or we can even have a CouchDB uh, a version of these uh, identity wallets here. And then we have to construct here an identity. So these are the identity credentials here, certificate and private key, membership service app provider ID, and the type is the is X509. And uh, this is the standard type of all certificates and uh, I think only this type is um, uh, supported at this time. Yeah, and then when we have this identity object, then we can put this uh, into the wallet and uh, that's it. 
And here we try this, we wrap this in a try catch block. So if an error is, it catches. And uh, since this is an um, asynchronous process, well, we have here the init function. So we have a function. And when this is ready, then we can print here out that uh, we have uh, added uh, some identity uh, to our local wallet. And otherwise, we have here and uh, we catch the error and write the um, trade stack here. So, and if this everything is working, then, so, oh, I'm called your wallet. We need a wallet. And this folder is empty. And then we can say, okay, we call this node add to wallet script. Ah, and identity admin successfully added to the wallet. And that means that we have now here in file admin ID. And this is a JSON document. So the JQ parser is very useful here uh, on this side. So, and then you can have here, you get a, a nice output. And you see here what, what this, uh, what, is, what is it for? So we have here, the, we, we read this certificate and bring it in the one-liner and also the private key. So yeah. I think you can do this also by hand um, because the only thing what you have to do is you have to, um, bring the certificate in one line and uh, uh, the breaks uh, should be this backslash ends in this backslash end format. And the same for the private key here. Yeah. And then we have this MSB information and this version one. So, and then we have an identity which is which can be used from the uh, Node.js SDK to connect. And that will be our next step. So um, for the next step, I need a new file. I call this uh, helper.js um, and this index.js file. So the helper.js file, has some uh, helping functions for me. So I use this on several, in several examples. Um, and uh, the index cheers. is the final program file. So, and in the helper file, we have um, here um, a method is called build connection profile. And, and build wallet, but I haven't used this here. Uh, pretty JSON string. So that is for the formatting. Uh, when we receive and result, then we can make a nicer JSON output with that. But the build connection profile here uh, is important because it reads this connection profile JSON file um, and uh, passed. The only thing what this file uh, does is it reads the connection profile JSON document here, or when, if it's a YAML file, then you have to read it as a YAML file. And then uh, we pass this uh, content as a JSON and give this back. So this is what this, this helper function here uh, is for. And uh, our main program uh, contains uh, this helper function and uh, the, the path. Um, module from the Node.js, and then here are some requirements for the from the fabric side. So we need these uh, wallets and gateways objects here, and we define some uh, variables or constants here. Uh, so we need an ident. We have we have to set which identity we want uh, to use, uh, which channel we would like to use, and uh, 
the chain code name. So the identity is the admin identity. So that's the name, that's, that's this name here. So the admin. The channel is the channel, is the channel name. Uh, and uh, the chain code is the chain code name. So that's easy. And here we read the connection profile uh, from the helper function. Then we create from the helper function uh, this uh, file system wallet here. So we have the wallet path here. And uh, then uh, we need the gateway. So we create the gateway. And the important part here is in the gateway connect method. So the gateway connect method uh, needs the connection profile as a in this case as a JSON document, then the wallet information, so which we have uh, created here, and then the identity label, also which name admin in this case, and then this discovery information. And here we have to say enabled false. So that's the part when you when you use this in, uh, in, the, no, in the normal test network, for example, then you can use here true. And then you don't need to define uh, the channel and the orders and so on. So then I think it's only some limited information needed. Um, the TLS certificate, uh, the, uh, when you, if you use uh, the certified authority and uh, the peer information. And as localhost true, yeah, that means that your system runs locally on the same machine. And this, it doesn't make a difference if this runs in a Docker container or it runs in the binary version. Here. But the important part here that you say enabled false. So that's the important part here. By default, that is true, of course, because then it's easier uh, to get all information for the uh, Node.js uh, client. And then with this information in place, we can uh, create the network. We get the network from the channel name. Uh, then we have the network and then we can get the uh, contract. And then when we have the contract, uh, we are ready to go for our um, chain codes queries. And, and then, so this is now my implementation here. So you can do it however you want. So I have, I, I have here uh, some um, arguments uh, which I can import from the CLI command. And I say uh, the command, uh, the argument two uh, here uh, is the method. So this is the chain code method I would like to uh, call. And the first is the get all asset. And then we can say contract evaluate transaction, get all assets. And then we will receive um, the result here as an asynchronous process with the await here. And then we can console, simply console log this here with the helper and pretty JSON string as we have seen from the helper function. And the same with the read asset. So yeah, I have also here an LSIPS uh, block for the read asset function. So, and uh, we can also call this read asset and we have here to name the asset, which we are going to read. And uh, this is the name of the chain code uh, method. And uh, you can, you have to know what is, in the, what is exactly, then you have to look into your uh, chain code. And you see here, so this is the read asset. So this is create asset. And you have also update assets. So these are the standard methods you can find into the uh, in, in this uh, basic asset transfer example here. Okay, so let us so the read asset method. Okay, and then we have also here created prepared to create asset and so on. And then we have if you are finished, then we can disconnect uh, from the gateway, and uh, then we close the connection together. And that's all. And, uh, and if this is working, we can try. So um, we call the node, node, uh, node um, index.js file. And then we say we test it. And um, what was it? Uh, asset 
one, for example. And you see it works. And, uh, but you see, it took a little bit of time because there is always a connection, then it's the, the, the read process, and then it's a disconnect here. And also when we say, okay, create asset, this method create asset. And then we can, uh, we can read asset A5. Then you see, we have here this sun and shine. Yeah. And in this way, you can interact with this network. And when we want to make a small change to this, so we want to debug this a little bit with more, with more, more console log, yeah? we can uh, control big, voila. So control three, control zero, then we switch. And now we stop the string code. With control C, we can stop the string code. And then we can make some modifications here. So maybe we want to read asset, read asset uh, for the test. So now we have changed the chain code here. And when we call the read asset method, we should see here this modified text. And to start this chain code, we, the only thing we have to do is we start the chain code again with this command. So now it's running. We can switch back with control B1. And then we read the asset again. And then you see here, with the asset for the test. And now you have, and in this way, you can change all the chain code, all your chain. You can develop the whole chain code step by step here and test every step, every single test, uh, every single step. And um, yeah, so I think with that, you have a, a really good workflow to develop a chain code and to test it. And this works as well in Node.js and also uh, in Go, for example. But in Go, you have to build the chain code before, um, and, um, but it's also um, a single, uh, single, a single key, key back uh, on, on your keyboard to build the chain code here. And yeah, so I've, and when we look the, okay, so, and then when we look here to the h stop command, um, fm four, and you see here, peer node, that your peers are always running. And uh, control, um, no, four, cool, so. And you can also leave this session uh, with control P detach. Yeah. And then when you come uh, later back, all this is running into this uh, subric <laughs> uh, session. Um, No. Hmm. Ah, attach. So this one does. And then you can come back and do your work again. Control B, zero. Stop your chain code. Remove your test. Start the chain code again, switch back, test your Node.js and you'll see we did set one. Yeah. And in this way, you can use the Node.js SDK to interact with your test network and also uh, the normal CLI commands, uh, which we have seen uh, before. So, this is working as well. 
So when we tried to query weak asset, this was a five. And you see the same result. But of course, this is a little bit faster. Yeah? And uh, that's the reason why um, in the Node.js application here, so uh, you should make, um, it's better to make a REST API. Uh, and uh, when this REST API is running, then uh, as long as REST API is running, you connect only once and, uh, and you, and during this REST API, this express chairs, for example, is running, then you can call this, the, the API endpoints from this uh, REST API. And uh, you don't have to connect every time per every request to the uh, fabric network. So the connection is stable and uh, then the response will be much faster than it's here in this example where you have always to connect. And um, the final part here is uh, also you can, so if you have problems, uh, then you can debug this. So, and the Node.js SDK has a lot of, has four debugging levels here involved and you can set the environment, one environment variable here, this, this HFC logging and uh, which this, you can define here a logging uh, level when we see, for example, this debug, then we can set this here. So, and then when you use this one, you see a lot of debug information here. And you see, so we, here we have the result and then here the gateway disconnect uh, starts later. So, and you see here, there are a lot of debug information which could be very helpful when you cannot read the connection profile, when you're facing some, some error with the, with the connection uh, or with anything in the, in the, uh, in the system, in the Node.js client, and then you can use this and you can see how far the program uh, comes. And then uh, you, maybe it helps you to find uh, the error a little bit more easier. So I think that's in useful information here. And uh, you can limit this also to errors, for example. And uh, then you can say here, so when you say debug, so you can say info warning error or debug. And this is the, the, the method. And then the output here, where, where should this message up is printed? And uh, you can send the console, you know, it's like this, or you can deliver it to a file. And when you say, okay, I have here the error, I, I want to lock the error, and I want to lock the error into, the, uh, into this error lock file. So you know, it's also possible. And you can combine this. So you can make also this one, so you can say debug console error in this file. So like this, I think this will also work. So and you can hide this, oops. So sometimes it's difficult to leave this crawl. Ah, that's this crawling. So when we unset this, then you get rid of this information. Okay, so let's wrap up our session for today. So let's come back to this slide. Um, and uh, what you have seen here is how we can use a fabric uh, dev network, how we can build this. So we have seen that we can use the binary versions and we can uh, let the orderer and the peer running in the background. Um, we can see how we can monitor this. 
with the jobs command yeah, or, or with h stop, for example. And we can use also this uh, terminal multiplexer to control this. Then we have seen we can connect this with the CLI commands very easily. So that's the normal way. But sometimes you want to use also uh, the Node.js SDK for that. And this is a little bit uh, that comes with a little bit more uh, effort. So, and we need the main steps are we have to know uh, what is the connection profile here. And uh, we need an identity. And the identity uh, is delivered from this sample config membership service provider file. And we have to convert this. And the con converting process is a simple uh, or finish in a simple uh, JSON uh, document uh, with the signing chart from this user and the private key from this user. And uh, with this information, we can create um, a small a program um, and uh, then we can use this identity to we can use this identity and the connection profile about uh, we need both of them to connect to the fabric test network and then we can hear um, the two we can use the evaluate transaction function or we can use the submit transaction function to interact with the fabric network. Okay, so I think I'm in the end of the session. If you have any questions, hi. So there are a lot of comments. I will look to this. So um, I was trying to execute Jenkins logic commands from the host machine, but also was able to actual commands till the hearing while the commission was in the Docker Docker from all and others. So I had to execute the commission with Linux. So is there any way I can also execute commands on host itself using peer until the hmm. I don't know. Um, I haven't tried this here. So um, I have to maybe I I have to test it, but on this, I can give you an answer, I think. So there can so much. Um, so for the CLI container uh, is, um, this This gives me the point where I have to say the CLI commander is used in the 1.4 favorite version and uh, not in the 2.2. So if you use 1.4, then um, I'm not sure how you can do this, um, but I think there will be a way, but I, this question, I don't, I cannot answer here. I have a question regarding the concept stuff gets that function. Is it, is it, is it read the value from the world set or blockchain? Yes. So, um, let us switch to this. So this is the get state here. Um, the get state reads always from the world state and uh, the blockchain, the blockchain is uh, the blockchain with blockchain, you mean the history, the, 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 the other versions of an asset. And um, for that, there's another command um, where you can query the history of an asset, but the get state uh, gives you always the world state uh, you the world state from the level DB database or from the couch DB database here. Okay. And this is always the latest, the latest version of an asset. Yes, get that returns a value of a specified key from the ledger, but always from the last, yeah, the last state of this of this asset. Ledger is world state. In blockchain, yeah, just so, yeah, I don't know. So the world state, so when we talk about an asset, so an asset is um, an element in this fabric blockchain. And uh, to get the information very fast, uh, in hyperledger fabric, there's, there is a world state. The world state is uh, represented in the database. So in the LabelDB database or in the chain, in the, in the 
uh, CouchDB database. And uh, all these queries goes to the world state. The world state is also the latest state of an asset. And uh, when, you, when you talk about the blockchain, then you mean uh, the ledger, for example, or also the ledger. So there's, I don't know, we have to look what is the right term for that. But uh, it's easier to understand that we have in the world state, the last version of an asset and all prior versions of an asset, the history of an asset yeah, is stored into the blocks, into the blockchain or into the ledger. So. The boards, I think the boards you can change. Uh, yeah, 7015, 7051. So these are standard boards for the orderer. Uh, but when you define the orderer, you can uh, define uh, a part of your own. So uh, uh, for that, look a little bit into the Docker Compose, um, Docker Compose YAML file, Docker Compose files um, in the test network. So in the test network, you find uh, also configuration from uh, where you use the raft ordering system and then the raft ordering system, you can have uh, more than one orderer and then you can see how the port numbers um, are organized, but uh, you can use here every port number uh, as you want. So because to connect to this uh, peer or to this orderer, you have to, uh, you have to name this port. So you have to name this in this in some environment variables. And as long this environment variables uh, match the port of the peer or the orderer, then you can use this. Uh, Lecture is coming at the Okay, my first time attending this meeting. I'd be very helpful to get to Oh, thank you. Uh, sorry for the typo. Call by asset, they return call as yellow. I want to uh, put a question about then. Yes, you know, so you have here a playlist. So we have uh, um, on the Hyperledger, um, on the official Hyperledger channel, we have a playlist from Hyperledger Sweden and there you can find all the um, videos, uh, all the recordings. I would like to introduce myself, Chris Gavel, in the group and talk about the Fabric Talks Working Group and invite everyone to get in, involved there to help people at Foundation School. Yeah, that's cool. The get history for key function is really interesting. Yeah, so, and that's the, the answer uh, from uh, for the get state, for the get state. So, uh, the get history for key function, this, this function gives you the history of um, an asset and uh, the get state gives gives you the last state of an asset, the so-called world state. Okay, so are there any other questions? Okay, so yes. Please tell me your question. Differences for the connection profile when using certified authority. Um, A good way uh, to see the differences is when you start a test network, um, then um, the test network create for the organization one and the organization two. Um, and for every uh, new startup and new connection profile in the JSON and in the YAML format. And uh, when you start the network, these uh, connection profiles will be created dynamically. So when, when, you, when you test this test network and you start this test network, then you can look into the folder uh, 
crypto config organizations and then you find the folder organization one and on the organization two and there you will find this connection profiles generated uh, from the boot process and in this you will see also how you define the certified authority informations uh, to this connection profile and uh, with this file you can see and learn how you have which information, uh, which uh, properties and which values you gave, have to have to give to this uh, connection profile and to see, and then you can see what is needed to uh, define this. I think this is a good way to see how this works. But you have to start, the tricky part is you have to start the, the test network and when you stop, when you uh, when you when you stop the, the, the test network, then all the crypto material and also the um, connection profile will be deleted, and then it's gone. So you have to start it, and then you have to look into this folder, and then you will see in the folder for the organization one and organization two um, two connection profiles, one in the JSON and one uh, in the YAML format. Okay, for the uh, certification, do we have to use the, use the Docker container? I don't know. Uh, I don't. Uh, mm, I don't know for, for the certification. Mm, so I think normally you have so the certification is on Fabric, I think Fabric 2.2, and in the documentation from Fabric 2.2, there isn't any information about how you use the development uh, network and how to use the, I think, the binary uh, information. So this started in Fabric 2.3. Um, I think you have to use the Docker container, but I cannot say it. I don't know. So uh, I don't know which. I have. I don't. I don't found, I haven't found any information about this. So, but I think the normal way is to use the Docker container. And uh, I think in this way should also the, uh, the certification. Yeah. Roland, I don't know the specific answer to that question either, but I do remember that we had had somebody from the Hyper or from the Linux Foundation training team come and present to the Sweden group a, a while back to talk about the training and certification so that if people are interested that recording is also on youtube in the sweden playlist yes thank you thank you for this information okay so i i think you the question and the, the q and a are now uh, finished so if nobody has an uh, any question here so you would like to um come into the session now if i understand this correct yeah, yeah. So, hi everyone. My name is David Boswell. I work at Hyperledger. I also want to inter introduce everyone to Chris Gabriel. We we are uh, involved in the Hyperledger Fabric Documentation Working Group, and I thought that there would be a lot of interest in that group with the people here. So, you know, like everything at Hyperledger, the Fabric Documentation is an open source effort, and anybody is welcome to get involved. And it felt like this group would be interested in that. You know, I think you obviously are interested in technical information about Hyperledger technologies. And there probably are places where you would like improved documentation or new documentation. So, you know, we just wanted to talk a little bit about that group, invite you to it. You know, we always welcome your input, comment, contributions. And again, if you're wanting better or improved or more documentation for the, you know, the content you're wanting to, you know, review as a group, you know, the group that the Fabric Documentation Working Group could be a really great place for that. So. Chris knows much more about it than I do, so I'll let him kind of give an overview, but I just wanted to say hi. And I'll drop a link here in the chat to where you can find out more about what Chris will be talking about. So. Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear. Very nice to meet you all. And very interesting presentation, by the way, Roland. This is my first time seeing your group here and uh, very well done. My name is Chris Gabriel. Um, I am a volunteer contributor to the documentation working group. I've been involved with the group since almost the very beginning in 27, late 2017. We've had some turnover in the group and we're hoping to recruit more members. So we are looking to other established groups in the community to maybe come in and share their knowledge. And there are very good instructions on how to become a contributor to documentation. 
uh, on the Fabric website. David can link to it. It shows you how to set up a GitHub fork for Fabric and, and how, to, how to contribute documentation step-by-step, -step, creating pull requests and, uh, and the like. So uh, just a, a quick short introduction and a pitch. We recently started to meet or decided to meet every other Friday. Uh, so um, we had been meeting every week, but a lot of the document heavy lifting had been done on version changes, but there's still much more work to do. Uh, an example of that would be, uh, you may have seen there is a change in the Fabric uh, GitHub repo to rename the master branches from master to main. So if you think about everywhere in the documentation in code snippets, we reference in instructions a master branch. Now we have to go back and redocument all of that stuff to main. So there's an example of how other groups can come in and help clean that sort of stuff up. And any help is uh, greatly appreciated. And if you're just not sure how to start or how to contribute, uh, the best thing you can do is join our weekly documentation call, ask questions. And we, we also do some technical demos during that call. Uh, I am the founder of two uh, block, uh, founder of a blockchain company based on Hyperledger Fabric. We do a lot of work in a node uh, SDK, uh, and we have working applications and use cases that we have the uh, the APIs written for and the front end Angular apps for the UI. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, demos around that as well, not just total documentation. So anybody who's interested in that, please feel free to drop by. And uh, David, I think dropped a link uh, into how to contribute. And David, if you could just put the meeting link in there, that would be great. Or yeah. I think you already did. Yeah. Yeah. The good news about the meetings is they fit really well with when you're meeting regularly too. So they're every other Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific. And I just dropped a link to the wiki page where you can find more details about the meetings. We book an hour for that meeting. Sometimes it doesn't take that long. So, um, and if we go every other week, it's not a huge time commitment, but uh, to me, how I learned Hyperledger Fabric really good was to become a volunteer in the documentation work group because uh, no better way to learn it than if you have to write the instruction manual for it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you for your input. Um, yeah, so I think so. I think the, uh, by my side, I have to say documentation is very, is very good. And um, I think also for the certification. So. Um, I think to pass the certification, uh, you only need the, uh, the documentation, uh, the official documentation. So you find a lot of useful information in and um, also the examples. And I think uh, the, the, the switch from 1.4 to 2.2 with the new test network, uh, this is really, really good because you can with with uh, some with a single command line we can start in the new fabric 2.2 with the new 2.2 uh, test network we can start a lot of different scenarios to test and to play with you know? and this is really a, a really easy and i think uh, it works every time so it doesn't matter if you want a fabric network with a certified authority or if you want couchdb for example so you only have to use the um, the, the proper um, uh, key for that, the, the option for that, and then uh, the, the, the network is starting, and then you can try and play with that. And that's, I think that's an improvement to the 1.4 version because the 1.4 version was a little bit more difficult to use all the different uh, um, situations. And that's it's really good also for, 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 for starters. And in my session here, I can use a lot of different um, scenarios with the, with the new network and uh, you can start it uh, uh, with any effort. And that's, I think it's really cool uh, to test and to use and, for, and of course to learn. Of course, of, and also the, the background scripts are very good documented. So you can learn from this a lot and uh, to see how um, the things are work together. And then you can uh, take some snippets for your own project, for example, or learn or modify it in your own way. So I think the 2.2 version are really good. But uh, one question I have, so why you find the documentation to the dev network here, to the peer dev network only in the 2.3 version and not in the 2.2 version? 
So, so the, if I understood you correctly, there the, the difference between two dot two and two three is. Can you repeat the question again? Um, we have here in the documentation. We have here a two point three version, and in this two point three version, we have a tutorial. for the session today, running chain code in dev mode. And uh, this tutorial is not in the 2.2 version. You can find this only in this 2.3 uh, version. So the question is why? Uh, the, that's, a good, that's a good question. And a lot of the people who were helping do this have left the group recently. So I would have to go back and investigate that and get back with you. There are some features available in 2.3 that are not available in less than 2.3, like the OSN admin channel join uh, for joining the channel for the new process. And so uh, that, that would not be available in any of the other um, branches. In some cases, it was um, written and not backported to the prior versions. That's usually the number one reason why it doesn't make it in there. So it's usually pushed to the latest branch. Um, but this is working also in the 2.2 version. So I use 2.2 version and uh, this is also working here. So, and yeah, the, there's here under the documentation, you will not find this here. So most yeah. of, the, of the users use this 2.2 version because it's the long time support version. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not so clear why this uh, dev this chain code dev mode yeah, is only on this 2.3 version here listed. Yes, I will have to go back and look at that and, and to answer that question. I don't know the answer right now, but I will look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, if, is there any question from the group? So if not, then thanks for the, for the attention. And um, in the next session, we will uh, move forward with our way in the Node.js development. And then we will use uh, the test network. And uh, with this test network, we can start then Fabric CA. And then we will see how we can use Node.js and uh, interact with the Fabric CA and can uh, make some uh, maybe asset uh, paste the chain code examples where we can query some different um, properties from the user and then we can make a little bit more about the permissioning uh, from the chain code side here. And that's, is, that's the, yeah, I think that's the plan for the next um, session. And then maybe a short announcement. Um, uh, my colleague from Hyperledger Budapest has announced uh, also uh, a session about Fabric CA, and uh, that will be will be in April, I think. And uh, maybe I will post about that in the next uh, in the next uh, session the link. And uh, this could also be interesting for everyone here to see a little bit more about uh, or to hear a little bit more about the Fabric CA. But this will be more from the administrator side. And uh, my part here is a little bit more from the developer side, from the chain code side. And maybe this is a good fit uh, that, that uh, uh, Daniel will show you more from the administrator side of the Fabric CA. And I will show you a little bit about uh, the chain code side from this. Okay, so thanks for your attention. And uh, I hope um, you have a great session today and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Do we just stay on here or do we have to leave and come back in? <clears throat> no, we can stay on. Okay. Hello.